Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Well, brother, um, in these difficult times, we are mourning the death of our martyrs, but at the same time, uh, alhamdulillah, celebrating the victory of our democracy. Um, July 15th marked a historic day for Turkey because the will of the people overcame the power of the gun. And if you look at public squares across Turkey, without exception, um, there's a mosaic of people from different ethnic, religious, and political backgrounds coming together in solidarity to, to defend our democracy. And alhamdulillah, the people are the heroes of the day for toppling this coup attempt. Uh, so let me begin with um, discussing how that night unraveled. Basically, um, I was with my family that evening and I received news um, from friends to turn on the television <clears throat> across, um, at around 9 p.m., 10 p.m. And what I saw was actually quite baffling. Basically, there were tanks lined up across the um, Bosphorus Bridge, and there were heavily armed military men. And my initial reaction was, okay, there's going to be a terror attack, and um, these military men there are going to protect us. But that impression quickly turned sour when I realized that it was not the case. Um, a couple of hours later, we watched the military edict being announced on national television, where the armed uh, forces announced that people should stay inside their homes and that the Turkish armed forces is taking over the government. Basically, we were actually just watching and listening in horror. And all I could think is, you know, this is the 21st century and this cannot be happening at this time and place. Um, but soon after, alhamdulillah, the president came to the rescue. He appeared on live television on CNN Turk channel, and he assured the people that he is the commander in chief, the president and in power. And he demanded that the people take to the street to defend their democracy. And that is exactly what happened because Unarmed civilians, peaceful men and women, retaliated against this uh, military coup. And unfortunately, we lost 209 civilians and 1,500 people um, were injured. Um, um, but brother, what uh, I want the international media to understand is the cruelty of what happened. Basically, this cult within the military hijacked F-16s, helicopters, tanks, and ammunition, and they attacked the Turkish parliament by bombing the premises seven times. They opened fire to the police stations in Ankara, attacking the National Intelligence Agency and the Turkish presidency. And at that evening, the general chief of staff of the armed forces was taken hostage along with other military officials who were later rescued by special forces. And I must also underline the fact that this coup is not the product of all military officials, uh, but only a fraction within the armed forces. These men, sworn to protect this country and its people, betrayed that trust. Nobody could have imagined this happening. It was absolutely shock and horror to all of us. Well, so Erdogan um, and his family during that evening were um, at a vacation spot in Marmaris when the two when the coup took place. So when the death bombs actually came to the hotel 15 minutes after he left the premises, he directly flew to Istanbul and joined the public on the streets. He affirmed that he is the president and in charge. And he took to defend the democracy in public squares by speaking in uh, several different places in Istanbul. He said, we need to be aware of the fact that there is a war against the people by a group of bandits within the military and that we must stand against them in solidarity, in unity. 
Um, during this time, uh, Europe and America took their time as they lingered around to see how things would develop. So soon after they realized that the people are claiming and clinging on to their democracy and defending their liberties, um, they started uh, giving in positive messages saying that they're with the government and that they're against the military coup and that they shouldn't overthrow a democratically elected government and a president. So. Overall, Turkey's message was directed towards one very critical ally, which is the United States. The firm message that the president gave to the government is basically, you need to give Fethullah Gülen back to us. This is a man heading the Fethullah terror organization and has orchestrated this coup to topple the government, and he needs to be extradited. Well, civilians, as I had mentioned, brother, are still in the public squares. Um, just the other day, I was in the Kılıçdaroğlu Center in around like 2 a.m. The prime minister came out to the public and said, you know, people, we're going to continue with our lives. We're going to go to work. We're going to do what we need to do. And after work, we're going to come back to the public squares to protest and to claim our democracy um, and not let any threat uh, take over us. Um, so there is certainly positive response from the people. There are people gathering in the public squares and we are continuing our resistance and we are continuing to claim our democracy. Yes, uh, the threat certainly does persist, um, which is uh, why we must be careful and why we must certainly continue our resistance. Um, and at the same time, uh, we have to be, we have to pray. I mean, duas are everything, I think. And the people's uh, resistance um, has shown and our prayers are being answered, inshallah. Um, definitely. So these are actually quite momentous times for Turkey because I think there are several issues that can help us understand Turkey's direction. We are in a geostrategically pivotal place in our geography and play a remarkable role in the way politics are shaped in the Muslim world. In the Middle East so far, we are the only Muslim democracy that has succeeded over the past decade. And we have shown full support to Arab Spring countries like Egypt, for example. We are vocal about the Palestinian cause. We condemn terrorists like Daesh, PKK, Feta, and the Syrian regime under um, Assad's dictatorship. And on the other hand, we are also establishing amicable relations with Russia and Israel. Turkey is an economically, socially, and democratically developed country that fosters people of all different backgrounds. It is an enriched society. So against this backdrop, I think... Um, Turkey's advanced foreign policy will see more internal stability as democratic institutions are uh, m furthered within Turkey. And for this to happen, um, we are demanding a new constitution and a new presidential system in Turkey. Um, and inshallah, uh, parliamentarians, especially from the AK Party, are working diligently on putting together a new draft, which we hope will be introduced to the public soon. Um, we want live coverage of what is happening in Turkey. I think the international media has been overlooking the fact that we had a coup and they have been focusing and targeting uh, more on how they can create this character assassination towards our president. Our president, Erdogan, is a democratically elected leader who garnered 52% of the votes and he is here to stay. We are here to defend him and our democracy. And we pray that the international community also gives us the support that we need.
Amin. Amin. Thank you so much. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.